welcome to Deck Analysis and Testing. Today we have a look at Magispectors. Magispectors is a Pendulum Wiz Bagcaster deck that's good at one thing and one thing only, but searching spell traps that remove cards on the field by tripping for cost. This seems like a huge cost for typical decks when your aim is to set free and every one of your back row needs a tribute, but the deck is pretty good at spamming monsters every turn because it is a Pendulum deck, even though all of your monsters are tiny, they all have really strong protection so that your opponent can't just force your back row out with something like a dark hole. And since the Duel Links only has three back row slots and uh, we're pretty much forced to use a pendulum skill that gives us pen zones so that we have space to actually set our back row or at least until we get a custom skill for the deck. And also this deck is like unbelievably cheap, everything is a low rarity and obtainable from a single box. I don't think we've ever gotten a deck like this since like Digital Bug. And this deck isn't even that bad. Let's have a look at the cards. We're playing all Magispector cards, there is not a single non Magispector card in the main deck. And as you can see, everything is extremely cheap. Let's have a look at the monsters first. We have the... Monster Searcher Bunbuku, all of your uh, Magispector monsters have the same protection in which your opponent can't target or destroy it by card effects. Bunbuku on summon searches a monster, including itself, it can search itself, that is correct. Uh, Crow Yata searches a spell, and Box QB searches a trap. We have a uh, Toad Ogama, which sets from deck, it can set either a spell or trap, depending on which you are missing, but you can't activate it this turn. So um, this is pretty much only good turn 1, and at turn 2 it also helps by setting some uh, back row when your opponent's turn begins, because this deck is not very good at dishing damage, because all of your monsters are tiny. So um, that is good for that as well. And finally, three copies of Cat and Necromata discard kind of search during the end phase, but it search anything. Uh, so even though you can't immediately set the card that you search off of your cat, you can still search something like a Bunbuku for next turn to help spam out monsters for Xyz or Link plays. For the spells, we're playing three copies of the field spell. This card can attribute a wind spellcaster to your special summon a level 4 lower meta specter from your deck, and it is a hard once per turn. Also gets a attack boost for all of your meta specter monsters. And uh, this card mainly is good going first by helping you cycle into the different names from your deck so that you have access to more different uh, named Magic Spectres and use their own summon effects. Next is three copies of Magic Spectre Cyclone. This card is a quick play spell that tributes to pop a monster on the field. It's both good going first and second. Going first, it's a disruption. Going second, it helps play through your opponent's disruption. So that's why we are playing three copies. Next is Magispector Storm. This card is not a quick play spell, so we are only playing one copy for uh, dealing with our opponent's monsters when we go second. It allows us to tribute a monster to uh, return a monster from your opponent's side of the field back to the deck. It's pretty good removal that uh, circumvents uh, protection effects like Ningirisu. Finally, we have one trap because it is limited to one. Magic Spectre Tornado. This card can tribute one to banish a monster your opponent controls. It's pretty good. Next are the uh, extra deck cards. We are playing a lot of Xyz and Link monsters. And um, these really help us close out games because the Magic Spectre monsters themselves don't have a lot of attack. We have one copy of Dark Rebellion to. Uh, beat over our opponent's stuff. We have a copy of uh, Anti-Luminescent Knight to protect our pen zones and back row from uh, back row removal because all of our monsters have protection anyway, we don't need to protect those so this is mainly useful for stuff like Cosmic Cyclone and uh, you could potentially use the redirecting effect to uh, redirect something like a Cosmic Cyclone back to one of your opponent's own back row which is pretty funny. Next is a copy of Rhapsody in the Berserk. This card can banish two from the graveyard to prevent your opponent's follow-up. And a copy of uh, Super Quanto Mech Beast Aeroboros, which flips a monster face down. 
and uh, when you use any of the rank 4s, you can rank them up into the rank 5 of Vespinato, and uh, this card is just big and deals piercing damage. And for the links, we're playing one copy of Lanferinkas and the Draco Masters combo. We're playing one copy of Deco Talker and one copy of Power Talker. Links are better than Nixies in this deck because um, the monsters go back to the extra deck, so you can just pen some of them back. And uh, because all of your back row needs a tribute, it's just nice to have guys on the field at all times. But the Xyz monsters have better effects in general, so just you, you will need to choose between uh, the two depending on the situation on the field. Let's have a look at the skill. Unite the Pendulums is not a new skill. It is uh, way back then when Sulfur Chords re are, are released. This skill is pretty much mandatory for the deck at least before we get a custom skill, because this is probably the best skill we could use that gives us a Pendulum Zone. So um, this skill, uh, other than giving us, you know, the Pendulum Zone, it also turns any one of your normal summons into both of your scales, which really helps you gain uh, initial card advantage before uh, your advantage loot starts rolling. So what it does is uh, you can uh, put a monster on your field to your pen zone and then scale another monster from your deck. And uh, you can only special summon one time from the extra deck during the turn you use this effect, but it's fine because um, during the turn you use it, you usually are not going to even touch the extra deck aside from pendulum summoning anyway, just so you have a bunch of guys on the field for your back row to tribute. So yeah. Okay, so normally I will talk about the expensive version, but because every single Magic Spectre card is low rarity and from the same box, and you don't really want to play any other non-engine anyway, I feel like it's just... Even if there is an expensive version, it's just gonna be uh, extra deck changes with like expensive extra deck monsters, so I won't bother showing you the expensive list, because it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Uh, let's have a look at the replays. We are going first, which is what this deck is really good at. This deck really uh, struggles a bit going second, but going first is uh, where the deck shines because it sets all of those uh, back row to deal with your opponent's stuff. With a pen summon, set free, and even though we do have set free, we can only use two because we only have two monsters to tribute, but if our opponent pops one of them, um, it's it's fine. We're going to pen summon for three during our next turn, and then get searching. We're going to make a massive chain to search a bunch of cards. Our opponent will put in droplet, but it's uh, too little too late. We can still use the monsters on field to make click monsters and attack for game. Okay, so let's have a look at game two. Once again, we are going first. That is wonderful. And another good thing about this deck is that, um, as far as Pendulum deck goes, it's really, really simple. Because um, there is one very uh, simple game plan that the deck aims to do, which is to summon guys and set back row. And also they don't have Pendulum effects, so you don't have to read as many um, cards as you otherwise need to for other Pendulum decks. And also, like, half of the effects of the monsters are the same which is like the same protection so yeah uh it's pretty good for new players not only price wise but also in uh deck difficulty as well we're going to pop the elephant and, and that ends their turn you're going to set to and pass and uh this guy that he has on the field has a effect when it is sent to the field from the field to the graveyard even though i don't think it really does anything uh, we will still play around it by um, using the spell to spin it back to the deck. We're gonna XC summon our Anti-Luminescent Knight, which uh, protects our scales and back row, and then we're gonna search the spell that spins the monster back to the deck. Our opponent will enemy control it, and we can't really redirect the, the Econ effect because none of our other monsters can be targeted, but that's fine because our opponent has two cards and we have two set back row, and that should be enough to seal the deal. Okay, in our third and final game, again, going first, wonderful. Even when going second, you can play through a very small amount of um, setup board by using the quick play spell, but um, it's gonna be rough otherwise. Uh, but we don't have to worry about that because we are going first. We're going to normal summon the Yata, grab our set play spell, use our skill, skill 2, 
and then pen summon everything we have from our hand. We're gonna set another Cyclone in case our opponent pops one of our back row, and we will still be able to have two disruptions to stop our opponent. Our opponent's playing Sky Strikers, and you will be able to see that Magic Spectres have a really, really good matchup against Sky Strikers in particular, and also other decks that need to target stuff from your field, because none of your monsters can be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So uh, none of the, you know, jamming waves, even uh, the jamming waves can pop back row, but you can just chain. Uh, the uh, afterburners can't pop your stuff, the Widow Anchor are completely useless. And uh, the only way they can clear your monsters is to beat over them, which is difficult when all of the um, striker monsters are tiny. So as you can see, they will be able to uh, pop our back row, but we can just chain the back row and get rid of one of their monsters. They're going to bring back the Ray, which is annoying, but um, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. They're going to make Kaina and uh, just have a target for them to pop, and then they are going to pop our scales, hoping that that stops our follow-up. But um, if you're playing against Magic Spectres, you should pop the low scale against all odds, and usually you should pop the high scale for uh, most other Pendulum decks, but for Magic Spectres, we have actually more high scales than low scales, so uh, pop the low scale. Our opponent pops the wrong scale, that means we can just scale the Yata and continue to extend. And by extend, I mean just uh, summoning more monsters and activating more back row until our opponent eventually runs out of resources and scoops just like uh, they did. Uh, funny thing, they actually activated a Book of Eclipse, which um, doesn't really do anything against our deck. I guess it flips everything we have face down uh, and it bypasses our protection. But um, he used it during our turn, which means when we end our turn, it all gets flipped back face up. And we draw two, which is funny. So it just basically gave us two draws for no reason. And yeah. Anyway, GG's.